Ronagate just won't quit. It's bigger than NBC, which is still spinning, by the way. Let me remind you, Ronna McDaniel is the former RNC chair and election denier. NBC hired her and fired her within four days, less than half a Scaramucci. The Republican National Committee is now debating whether to restrict NBC's access to the GOP convention this summer. And Donald Trump's daughter-in-law, who took Ronna McDaniel's job, has made being an election denier a litmus test for anyone seeking a role at the RNC. In order to be hired, you have to say Joe Biden isn't really president. Back in the old days, pre-MAGA, I'd invite a conservative and a liberal to the table and have them duke it out. Both sides would present their best arguments. I'd moderate the conversation, and the audience would decide who sounds most sensible. But with the Trumpification of the GOP, those days are gone. To be a Trump spokesperson in 2024 means you have to take a vow of dishonesty. And I mean that literally. So how do you knowingly let liars on the air? The Bulwarks Tim Miller and I had a lively debate about that and more. Watch. Ron is kind of an easy call because she was among the most shameless liars when it comes to the, you know, the election denialism and, and apologists for Donald Trump. But here's the problem, Don, like, okay, so if you're a news network, we can take it out from cable, just anything. If you're a news organization of any kind, any platform, and one party has become, a, you know, completely enthrall to a pathological liar who tried to overturn the government, and everybody supports them at some level in that party, but that's one of the two major parties in our system. Like, what do you do? Like, where is the line? I, you know, do you have Mike Lee on your network? I Mike Mike Johnson is the Speaker of the House now. He was he was part of the effort to overturn the election. Uh, you know, like where? Like, why is Rana? How do you how do you deal with these people? Well, um, here's it's as I said, it's a case by case basis because Mike Lee is a Speaker of the House, so you want to hear from the Speaker Mike of the Johnson House. But in is. that, Mike I Johnson, gave you two mics, yeah, yeah. Mike Johnson is a Speaker of the House, and you want to hear from him, and you want to hear from people who have roles in the government. You have to do that, but you have to fact check them in real time, or you tape them and then offer your viewer, you tell them or whomever or your listener, this is the truth. They were lying about this. Um, but Ronna McDaniel is not even popular among the MAGA folks, even though she helped him out. I mean, she's not even popular among Republicans. Like she's kind of on the outs of the party. She just she got out it like Donald Trump said, no more. I'm going to put someone else in. So that's why I don't really understand that decision. It's not a tough decision when it comes to Ronna McDaniel. But when it comes to other people, you don't have to put people on who are, um, you, you know, you don't have to put the Matt Gates of the world on. I'm sorry. Um, you can talk about people. You can talk about folks. You can talk about their policies. You can try to under. You can explain um, what they're doing, but you do not have to put them on if they're only going to come on and hijack the the broadcast or whatever it is that you're you're doing and lie to people. It doesn't look. It's very simple. You're offering a service, and if people aren't getting anything from that service, then why do it? You know, I, I came to buy a cake and you're trying to sell me a pizza. That's not, you know, that's not what you do. But and also what I would tell people all the time when they came on and they tried to lie and they, they wouldn't, you know, pay attention or, you know, they tried to hijack the show is that it is not a right for you to appear on any network, on this network that I'm on. It is a privilege for you to get to speak directly to the American people and so many of the American people. And so if you're going to come on and if you if you want to have that privilege, then you have to respect the people and not lie to them. And you have to respect the network and you have to respect me. Otherwise, I don't have to have you on. Do you um, do you worry, though? I hear I totally agree with everything you said. I just wonder how you think about the echo chamber problem of it all. I mean, sometimes I feel like it is, you know, back. Yeah. Not when I'm like. Not, not as much anymore. Like back in 2016, it made sense. Like I just worked for Jeb, yeah. you know, networks would have me on. It'd be like, hey, you'll have an Obama person and a former Jeb person and we'll argue and sometimes we'll agree on things, sometimes we'll disagree. That made sense, right? But I feel like then that continued into the Trump era where people would be like, hey, we'll have Jen Psaki and Tim Miller on. And it's like, me and Jen agree on almost that. I mean, like we don't <laughs> agree on tax cuts, right? But like we, like on the core question about the, the guy that was the president at that time and now is running for president again, we agree. And so don't you need to represent the view of the of MAGA world? That, like if you're if you're in political news, like don't you need to represent their view at some degree and not just have never Trumpers be the token you know, yes. whatever? 
Of course. I, I don't think you're hearing what I'm saying. You can have people who represent the MAGA party, but the, but are there, there anybody people? Is yeah. there anybody that represents them that doesn't lie? Now, now we're in the Mobius strip. You know, now, now this is the question: Is who is that? Who is that? Oh, who represents the MAGA ooh. party that is not a liar? That's the question. That's well, it's hard. That's really tough. I mean, you know, can you have Kellyanne Conway on? <laughs> can you have Sarah Sanders? Can you I have Kaylee McEnany? Right? It's like I, I mean, okay. It's just who very you- interesting because you know. Kellyanne Conway, I remember being on when she actually made the switch from uh, Ted Cruz to Donald Trump. And I was like, hey, wow, I don't get that. I mean, it was like over yeah. like a light switch. I know. Um, we were in the green. I happened to one green room, I think. I was there. I was like, it, she it just did. got a phone. It, she well, got you, a phone call and changed her mind. Yeah. yeah I we argued in the, the green room. Yeah. I remember reading the blue cards and it said, you know, um, Kellyanne Conway, Donald Trump advisor, Trump advisor. And I said, to my producers, I said, hey, guys, are you listening in the control room? <laughs> we need to fix Kellyanne's blue card because uh, it says Trump, but she's a, you know, she's a super PAC or whatever thing for Ted Cruz. Cruz. And then she looked over at me. She goes, no, that's right. And I went, now you're for Trump? She goes, yes. And I went, God, I don't really understand this whole <laughs> politics thing. Like, it went overnight. Uh, Kaylee McEnany was someone that we put on. She, they needed someone on a show called Get to the Point, which eventually became my staff. They were doing a test show on the network and it was called get to the point. They needed like someone who was anti-Trump or Republican who was cute and blonde or whatever. And so they put her on and then she was sort of, she came on, I think as an anti-Trump. And then I, she realized like being pro-Trump got her more, you know, recognition. And so then she became pro-Trump, but it's, it's interesting how people sort of with no resumes made their resumes and then moved to the front of the line. Yeah. Trump in the Trump okay, so we've we've navigated this first hard question, <laughs> which is we don't know what to do. We 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 you, both you agree that we should have the MAGA folks re- represented, but we don't. Know. Maybe we should get a MAGA AI. It's one to, of those. It's one them. of those. I don't know. It's one of those things. You know it when you see it, right? Yeah. You know when someone is like, well, they say you. I don't know. I can't really give you the definition of pornography, but I know it when I see it. Yeah. I can't really give you the definition of who. Um, you should have on, but you know it when you see it. You know it when at least people are trying to be practical and they're t- trying to tell the truth. No one is going to – look, people are going to – it's politics, right? Right. They're going to lie to you or I shouldn't say they're going to lie to you, but they're going to you know, embellish. They're going to have their talking points. That's all normal stuff. But if people like come on and they flat out lie, I think you need to change your – you know. All right. So there is – um, there's a supply side of this and the demand. Okay, now it's like, okay, so the first question is how to deal with the politicians. Now it's like, okay, how do you reach the peop- the voters that are driving all this? How do you reach the mega people? And I saw an interesting stat yesterday of the, you know, how people are always like, oh, Trump has some problems within the Republican Party. It's being showed in the Haley vote in the primary. The most, there was a poll yesterday or a couple of days ago, and it asked, you know, Republican voters whether they're happy with Trump being the leader of the party. And it also asked what kind of media they consume. And among people that only consume MAGA media, 100% were happy with Trump. Among the people that also consume other media, it was like 70%, right? So it's, you know, you can see just how much of it is a media. Yeah, I mean, some of this is chicken and egg, but um, but how much of the, the media drives this. So I kind of, you, how, do you have, to, I mean, it seems to me like your effort to do an X and to get with Elon, I've listened to some of your other interviews, was like some attempt to break that bubble. Uh, is that right? I, I, what are your thoughts yes. on how to, before we get into the details of the Elon interview, like at the biggest picture, how do you break into that bubble? Do you have thoughts? Well, on? you you have to do what, you have to be willing to go into the lion's den. And not many people are willing to do that. I am, you know, I see Pete Buttigieg doing it all the time. Uh, I even see Chris Christie doing it, you know, going on, of course, he's running for office. So he's going, um, you know, to, on to speak to Democrats, what have you. And I think he's like becoming part of no labels now. So we'll see where that goes. But um, I think, look, unless you go into the lion's den and be willing to get slaughtered, <laughs> as I was, then you're not going to reach those people. Uh, because even, and this is, we'll go in depth about Elon, you know, a little bit later, I'm sure. But even Elon admitted that he hadn't really watched me on CNN. Basically, his idea right. of who I was, was watching me on you know, probably Fox or on conservative networks. And it's just sound bites of me where I'm a character or it's a caricature of Don Lemon. So, but the interesting thing is, is that when you go in to try to reach those folks, they don't want to hear what you have to say. 
So, and if you hold up a mirror to them and you hold up facts to them, they're like, whoa, wait, wait, you're a liar. It's just, what are news. you doing? Yeah, it's fake news. And so it's like, well, I don't, uh, maybe we're in an era now where it's just, maybe it's just not possible. I don't know. But I mean, what you're saying, think about what you're saying. 100% of the people who hear Donald Trump or listen just, just to conservative media, they love him. And then what did you say? It was like 70 70-ish, that's something in 70 yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if we could take off 30% I mean, of those other people, that's it, that's a win. We're in a much better situation, right? Like, you well, know what I, I mean? Yeah. What I'm just saying, though, is that the, their minds are made up. It's a fait accompli. Yeah. On, on the other end, you know, I have never seen so many people who are so overrepresented in polling. And everyone's like, oh, we need to hear from the MAGA people. What do they think? We hear from them all the time. Yeah. Like every single... Every single um, poll that we get, this is what MAGA thinks. Every single focus group that we do, this is every single, you know, group thing that we go to get opinions. It's always the MAGA people. They're overrepresented. So how much more do we need to know about them? It tells you exactly how they feel. Whatever Donald Trump wants, that's what they do. So what do you think? Should the press stop talking to MAGA Republicans or should they challenge them every time they spout a lie? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching The Don Lemon Show. Make sure you click on the image in the top right to subscribe to my channel and the thumbnail in the bottom right to watch more content from my show. And I'll see you next time.